Where would you find the first stock exchange on the Chinese mainland? Where did China's first jumbo jet begin its maiden test flight? Where were the world's first macaws cloned? Welcome to Shanghai, home to the iconic skyline that symbolizes China's economic success. 2019 marks 70 years since the founding of New China. What happened to transform this once vulnerable country into the world's second largest economy? To begin, we must first cast our minds back 98 years to before the skyscrapers and to humble beginnings in a modest building. This is Shinwa Special. I'm Helen Bentley, and over five episodes, I'll be exploring the moments that matter to modern China. In the 1920s and 30s, Shanghai was known as the wicked Paris of the East. As the movers and shakers of high society frequented decadent hotels, the lower echelons were confined to the margins of society. It was a playground for the haves and a life of drudgery for the have-nots. In 1921, 13 Chinese communists met here in this building in the French concession area under the noses of the very people that the meeting aimed to dispose. What they discussed changed China. I spoke to leading China expert Zhang Weiwei to find out why. So yeah. why was it held? Yeah, to save the nation. Because at that time China was so poor, so weak, so much bullied by foreign powers and they need a revolution. And all of a sudden, with the outbreak of the Soviet October Revolution, came Marxism and Leninism. And then the Chinese uh, intellectuals tried to organize something similar to the Soviet Communist Party. Mm. So they came here, 13 representatives, representing about 50 members in total in China, and Mao Zedong was one of the chairman Mao. So what sort of yeah. thing was discussed here? Well, they basically discussed this uh, program of the party. Now we call it the constitution of the party. It's about how to organize the party, the objective of the party, the purpose of the party's work, etc. Yeah. Why yeah. did they choose Shanghai? Uh, because Shanghai at that time had roughly 50% of Chinese working class, proletarian class. As you know, classical Marxism stress the role of the working class, proletarian class. That's why you know, they came here to the city, to the city where you have factories and workers to organize this party. But as is so often the case with new ideas, sparking change was a risky business. That meeting came to an abrupt end when police raided the property. Undeterred, just a few days later, they reconvened on a boat in Jiaxing, effectively concluding the first National Congress of the CPC and the founding of the party. It marked a new chapter in China's history. These pioneer CPC members are immortalized in something that the party calls the Red Folk Spirit, a term that's used to inspire members to emulate the persistence and dedication of those who dared to be first. The locations too are symbolic and have been called the places where the CPC's dreams set sail by Chinese President Xi Jinping. But where are these dreams sailing to? Almost a century ago, those founding members set a seemingly impossible mission to rejuvenate the nation. Shanghai stands testament to how big dreams can come true. It represents what President Xi Jinping called a tremendous transformation of the whole nation as it stood up, grown rich and become strong. Could those founding members ever have imagined that their dreams would have led to this? This city, once a foreign concession, is now a symbol of China's reform and opening up and a global hub for finance and innovation home to the country's first pilot free trade zone. The city has become an industrious center for innovators of all stripes. One enterprise is Tesla, which in January broke ground on this, a $7 billion gigafactory. This is the largest foreign invested manufacturing project in Shanghai's history. 
and the first factory that Tesla has built outside the United States. So far, over a hundred different measures tested at Shanghai's FTZ have been rolled out across the country. Just as the reforms are expanding, so too is the area itself. The Tesla factory is being built on the new Lingang site, which promises an innovative atmosphere with standards to rival some of the most competitive free trade zones in the world. Away from the fast-paced life of the city, some people in Jiaxing have realized that making money isn't necessarily all about speed, just like Mr. Zhang. Snails are pests to gardeners the world over, but the Zhang family rises every day at 5 a.m. to tend to their escroditoire. With around 120,000 of the shelled mollusks, the family can easily collect 1,500 kilograms of them a month to sell. Uh Jung's farm is just one of 130 here in Jiaxing that works with this factory. It's the only factory in the whole of China that covers the entire snail chain, from farm to table. It receives two and a half thousand tons of snails every year. That is hardly a snail's pace. In fact, the company is part of a dynamic local economy that has one of the lowest income gaps in the country. The disposable income per capita of rural residents in Jiaxing was just over 34,000 yuan in 2018, more than double the national average. Almost a century after a new vision was first floated on a boat in this very city, Jiaxing has emerged as a front-runner in China's mission to achieve common prosperity. What happened? So the CPC is a credit for building up this nation as a modern country. You know. It's a Chinese miracle. We can reach consensus for 1.4 billion people. And then, based on this consensus, we move the nation forward. We do things together with one plan after another. And then also we try gigantic experiments and pilot projects in different parts of China, in different sectors of the economy. And once they are successful, these pilot projects, we began to spread them across China. 98 years ago, Shanghai was the epitome of inequality and Jiaxing offered a refuge for ideas to grow. Perhaps this is exactly why these two locations were where the meeting of the CPC had to happen. Adversity, after all, is the mother of invention. The hardships were far from over, as we will see next time in Jiangxi, one of the starting points for the long march. Another crucial moment that matters to modern China. I'll see you there.